crowdfunding power has been unleashed, we can't just put it back in the box. Welcome to Roll for Crit Kickstarter Pickstarter. <laughs> Boy, you took it up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> This wouldn't be a complete Kickstarter Pickstarter without one that had a lot of minis. And Overturn Rising Sands is there for you. In this game, the kingdom has been overthrown by an evil wizard, and you are trying to save and return peace to the kingdom. This has a Middle Eastern sort of theme going on, but what's sort of interesting is you sort of set up a board with all these buildings with towers, and usually you can have snipers, enemy snipers on top, and patrols going along, as well as civilians, which they may be killed, which could end the game quicker. In addition, you can actually talk to the civilians. They may give you a little mini quest and including scrolls to open up should you complete them. This looks sort of like an interesting theme and I really love the way the buildings work because it was sort of cool to see these snipers on top as well as you hiring maybe mercenaries for your side as well as, you know, there may be some magic demons and efforts coming loose as well. So when you say uh, snipers, like modern day snipers? No, like bowmen, sorry. Oh, okay. But like in the sense of like the long range on top of a tower so you have to be more, maybe a bit more careful okay. with line of sight which I thought was sort of cool. Because I heard Middle Eastern theme and I was like, oh, probably ancient. No, uh, then Middle I was East. Like, Oh, theme. I, I, oh, sorry. yeah. Well, it's Middle Eastern. No, Middle. What's is there a difference? For some reason I'm thinking. Oh, I was thinking uh, mi medieval or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Look, geography is confusing and hard for and us. And I'm bad with words as well. But it does sound like a cool game. Yeah, I, I, I like buildings. Are they like you get little models of? Yeah, buildings? there's actually like it's not just like a board that has buildings on them. There's actually all 3D, which looks really cool. Love that. Love and that. All, all these crazy minis. Like there's expansions. Obviously, like it goes for eighty-eight dollars now. But there's like expansions and other things you can get. Like there's a dragon you can get and like this crazy like scorpion person, if I recall. So like plenty of to fit your uh, your your mini needs <laughs> of all the weird stuff. This comes from uh, Foxtail Studios. So if you just really need even more minis on your shelf, this may be the game you're looking for. Raccoon Tycoon is our next pick from Forbidden Games. Uh, this is basically your classic buying stuff and selling stuff kind of marketplace game in the style of uh, Lahav or Lahav's younger brother, Harbert. But it has a theme of raccoons and other strange uh, uh, anthropomorphized sort of animals with clothes and hats. Basically, there are different types of goods, and on your turn, you're going to try to produce those goods and sell those goods when they have a higher value in the marketplace, but everything that you do is going to have an impact of uh, changing the price of those goods. And there's also going to be an aspect where there are auctions at certain times, and the different cards that comes out have sets, and you want to get more of the same card from a set to be worth more points at the end of the game. So you're using your money to buy goods to be able to buy buildings and other things that can kind of build an engine for you to make your gameplay easier, but you also want to keep some money saved in case an auction happens and you want to get a card that's going to really complete your set so nobody else takes it from you. Plus, of course, there's a cute theme, like I said, of all these animals with some really artwork that I think we really like. <laughs> yeah, the set's like, you can see one behind us, but they have names like, there's the top dog set, there's the fat cats. <laughs> yeah, they're very weird. There's a great bear in there. <laughs> but I do really like the sort of the gaining resource mechanic because the way it works is you play cards have a top and a bottom, mm -hmm. and the top happens first, and that will increase the price of items. And then you collect a certain number depending on what buildings and stuff you have. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a sort of challenge of like, if I raise this high enough, because once you, if someone sells in that resource, it goes back down. So it could be like, I want to make sure I'm the one who gets that good price on wheat. Right. Which I thought was a really fun sort of... Yeah, I, I like that. And I, and I think the auction, both of those things being in it is what really makes it interesting. That you have to think about both aspects. And it, it seems like a fairly simple game too that's like not too insanely complex, but you know, hopefully still gives you the satisfying feeling of uh, buying and selling stuff for raccoons. <laughs> so Raccoon Tycoon, it goes for $49, and it's up there right now. When the world is ending and humanity along with it, what will you do? Actus Mundi is asking this question in the game, So Long My World. The world is ending, and you are and playing with other players to sort of... What what are you gonna do at the end? It's you're collecting karma, and whether are you gonna be trying to get those last happy moments, or are you gonna go into madness and go into your more darker desires? And in this game, you'll be collecting points and different karma to use cards. Some of them will have more negative attributes like anger or sadness, and will do more negative things. All the positive ones will usually help everyone. So sort of this interesting art style, but what's really cool though is not the multiplayer game, competitive game as much as the actual single player. They have a special campaign mode 
where you will actually go through a campaign with certain things unlocked and have to unlock them and your choices will bring you to different endings, which actually will give you certain points to help you unlock several other campaign different en endings. So it's this sort of going back and forth and find out what really brought the end of the world, what caused the end, and sort of this cool choice-driven uh, cho uh, choice driven campaign style, which I thought was really cool. And the fact that the ending will actually help you get other endings really sounds really cool to me in the art style. And it's definitely an interesting question that we, you'd have to ask yourself, yeah. what would you do in your last moments live? And they've hit a lot of stretch goals, including actually a sort of two-player campaign which is mm. great because cool. that way you can always have one more. We've liked some of the single player games that there's, we know some of them like they're okay with two. So the fact that they're designing one that would work already with two, you don't have to be like, okay, we can just fudge this with you and me sitting together and are talking about the choices. Yeah, the solo campaign was definitely the part that I thought sounded really cool. Yeah, Other people, no. I, th I think a lot of people are different. Some people just really don't care, aren't interested in solo gaming at all. I think we both really think it's cool and like it, especially, and because usually the campaign is, you know, they would design that for the multiplayer, but the fact that it was specifically designed for one person. No, that and that's neat. what I love because uh, a lot of the campaign games we have that are multiplayer were like, oh, uh, this guy didn't make it to the table, so I guess we won't play that one. This is just like, right. sure, if we want to do the multiplayer, we'll play that one. But the single player, once you guys leave, you know, I'll put some nice I'll put some music on, I'll be in my like pajama pants and just play the single player game. Have a glass of wine. But and the theme of this one too, it sounds like so it's so dark and weird. But in a, in a really I think that asks like a really fun question though. So. Yeah. It's a question we're all gonna need to be asking ourselves <laughs> very shortly. <laughs> yes, this goes for 35 for the base, but of course I think there is an expansion uh, that's currently within there. It says add-ons to be soon added so there may be some more stuff they're thinking of but now that they've made a lot of them and they're like oh sh we gotta come up with some stuff so right. uh, keep an eye out on it and our last pick is for all you hungry people out there. It's the Edible Games Cookbook, designed and written by Jen Sandercock, who worked in uh, other mediums, including video games, on games like Thimbleweed Park and some other, and L.A. Noir as well. Mm -hmm. And now she's taking her gaming and her cooking loves into this Edible Games Cookbook, which is not what I thought when I first saw it, which is something that we've seen before where people will make, you know, baked goods that look like a Catan board or Ticket to Ride that you can eat. It is actually original game designs included in the book that use cooking and eating food as a core component of them. So as an example, one of the ones that they, they include uh, for free that you can take a look at right now if you look at the campaign is uh, a game where there's sort of a grid of squares and you, there are different pieces on the board and every everything is edible. They're all, it's sort of like brownies with different kinds of very different kinds of treats on top. And uh, you need to move those pieces onto certain squares of the board. And if you do, you get to eat them. <laughs> and there's a thing that takes place and you, you get points for having eaten the most of those things before everyone else, once they're all gone. Uh, there are other games, for instance, where there's like, there's there's some that's more party oriented, where there, you make foods that actually are really gross and you're supposed to try to eat them without making any funny faces. There's one where it's kind of more of a memory game and you're supposed to figure out like, which of these foods uh, would these characters within the game world like and you have to taste them and try to like guess what you think. I think there's 12 games in all and they're very in-depth, very detailed as to how to make them. They also include like a shorter version of how to do a game of them if you don't have as much time to go into all the details as well as different options for uh, you know vegetarian versions, gluten-free version, uh, uh, like no cheese version, like whatever your needs are, sugar-free uh, so that it's inclusive to anybody whatever your diet is, but just sounds like such a, a neat idea. And the food looks, it looks tasty. Sounds, I think this is something that it's like totally up your alley. Oh, absolutely. And I feel like we, like, we, I'm we shocked I missed it. this one. <laughs> You're like, did you see this? I'm like, no. Yeah. I mean, I really was looking at it and I'm like, we have to get this book and do some of these <laughs> recipes. I think it's for like the most excited one I've Yes, I but the, the one with the, the making bad food, we can't have my brother involved. <laughs> he will take that to a new level. You know that. He'll put some bad things in that food. That one is not online, so I don't know exactly what's in those gross foods. <laughs> but there's some really neat concepts in there, uh, and hopefully that's definitely something that I think would be fun for gamers and non-gamers to just be like, hey, come over for a Saturday and we'll, we'll cook something together. You learn how to make something, and then you mm -hmm. get to play a fun game with it. Uh, for $25, you can get the PDF. For $60, you can get a hardcover version of the book. Uh, and wouldn't that look nice somewhere in your house? It would look fantastic. <laughs>
that's all our Kickstarter Pixars we have for now. Before we leave to get something to eat, we want to just remind you, this is the last week to enter our contest for the Rick's Must Be Crazy game. There'll be a link down below, or you can visit rollforcrit.com. Enter while you still can. Until then, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been Kickstarter Pickstarter. Don't forget to click that like button and of course subscribe for even more excellent videos. I subscribed and now I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs>